speak. Now we're going to go into TGA. The TGA analysis measures the amount and the rate of change in material as a function of temperature or time in a controlled atmosphere. We can run up to 1,000 degrees, and we're going to measure weight losses, gains, decomposition, oxidation, and dehydration. This is some of the different areas you can use this information. Here's a schematic. This is a balance up here. This is purged with nitrogen all the time. There's none of this decomposition product that comes up this direction. It all moves down this way. There's a tube a wire that holds the pan is right there that holds on to the sample. These this little mechanism over here brings the pan over and hangs it on the wire, so you don't even have to do that anymore. Um, the pan is sitting right there, and the oven comes up. Gas flows in this way and out this way, your purge gas, whatever you're referring to use. And you can use either um, nitrogen or air. It's the usual one. We kind of stay away from oxygen, because sometimes what happens is you can actually, the um, decomposition can happen on the pan and actually start a fire. And if it does that, the weights are not constant. It's just floating in the air. Here's a close-up of the schematic. This is a quartz liner. Your purge gas comes in here, goes out this way. Your sample pan sits right here. Your thermocouple actually comes down a little further. It should come down right into here so that both the sample and the thermocouple are seeing the same temperature. Uh, Typical methods are the same or quite the same as what they are for DSC. Some different kinds of ramps. You can ramp just a straight ramp up to 800 degrees. You can ramp and isothermal for a period of time. You can ramp and switch gases and then hold for a particular amount of time. Factors that influence the baseline. Stability of the table, that is a big one. Um, if people are slamming doors and banging on your benches, you really need something that is not going to be moving around so that the very uh, the balance is not going to be jarred ever. Hang down wire condition, if there is soot or dirt that gets up near that wire, um, it can influence your numbers. The, um, the condition of the wire and the tube, both of them, can get dirty. So sometimes you have to just run up to 1,000 degrees, let it sit, burn all that stuff off, and then you're all set again. Leveling of the team to GA is important. Cleanliness of the furniture and purge gas and rates. Uh, if you purge too fast, you also have uh, the pan vibrating in the air. Um, you want to maximize your surface area, and it will improve your weight loss resolution and your temperature reducibility. reducibility. You want to distribute the um, material evenly over the bottom of the pan. Um, liquids can be run in hermetically sealed pans and with a hole in them. I like this method because quite often when you run a liquid on a TGA pan, it wants to just boil up over the edge of the pan. So it's kind of nice to hold it inside of the pan, and if it does go over the top, it stays a piece of the TGA pan. And then sample uh, 10 to 20 for most applications for dry and 50 to 100 for most measurements of follicles. Platinum, I would say, would be the, the most, the pan I use the most. It's very easy to clean. It's not porous. The only thing is, it does alloy with most metals. So if you use a tin lid solder and want to measure the melting point, you just move it to a platinum pan because it ain't coming off. <laughs> um, so I would use a metal, it's probably in the ceramics. At least you can get it out of there. Um, ceramics are great for corrosive and inorganic samples and for large samples. And they do make uh, TGA pans that are aluminum. Um, they're only up to 600 degrees of <coughs> panel melt, and uh, they're usually a one-time throw them away when you're done. They're usually pretty reasonably priced on them. Things that you can, uh, typical applications, thermal stability, compositional analysis, and oxidation stability. Okay, now with more samples. Um, these were all supposed to be the same, they were up to us. As you can see, the top of the portion of the polymer portion of the curve is fairly much all the same. They're all on top of each other. But when you get to the inorganic portion of this sample, huge difference. So this one is probably about 20%, and this one has about, uh, well, about 45% inorganics. So you're going to have a totally different uh, feel to that material than if they were all in the same place. It was a uh, was four. Let's see how do I get back to you? These were no. These are all 
different samples. And they were all supposed to be the same. Different lots, yep. This was a sample that we received. Um, we were going to do some compounding out there. And as you can see, there was a huge amount of water that was bound water, which doesn't come off as easily as a regular just surface water. So what was happening, they had to get rid of this bound water before they could run this sample. And the TGA took that very plainly. That's what had to happen. Um, this one is a little bit light, but I'll kind of talk you through it. It's a carbon black. Uh, carbon black, you can hold in your sample until you get to 600 degrees if you use the nitrogen. Once you get to 600 or 700, you tell it uh, to go into air, and it will burn the carbon black portion off. This material was um, used for, it was a rubber material around taillights for a four, uh, um, four wheel vehicle. And what was happening was the, um, head, the lights are burning. So what we did is we ran some TGA analysis. This is a material that was made in the United States. It only had 0.48% carbon black in it. This one had 41% carbon black. Carbon black is very conductive. There's your fire. Here's another one. Uh, these were supposed to be the same. Um, one they said was soft and one was so hard that they couldn't get it to seat properly in a, in a valve. This one has like 50 some percent, this one has 30 some percent. Nice, easy way 